In this episode, we're going to look at the JSON module as well as the network module, which will allow us to use Wi-Fi. And after that, we're going to look at some example code that I've put together that implements both the JSON and the network code and uses list comprehension to extract data that we grab from the internet and display it in a user-readable way. My assumption is that you know what JSON is already and I'll just be covering the basics of using JSON and the network modules. I'm sitting here in the REPL on my tiny Pico. You've seen me go into our shell before, so I'm not gonna cover that again. Now, before we have a look at the JSON module, how do we find out what modules are actually included within our MicroPython port? Well, there's actually a way of doing that. What we can type is help, open brackets, and with quotes, can be single or double quotes, type in modules, and this will actually give us a list of all of the modules that are available to us in our port. Now, every MicroPython port might have some different things in it. For instance, the ESP8266 and ESP32 ports have the NeoPixels included, where I don't believe they're included in some of the other ports. So these are all the different things that we have access to without having to add modules ourselves to our file system to use them. So we can already see here that there is a JSON module, and we can see that there's a network module. Now, what's if we want to find out what's inside those modules, what the different members and, and methods are? We can't just type help right now on those particular modules because we don't have them imported. So we need to actually import them first. So if I import JSON, it's now imported and I can type help on JSON. Now, there's a difference between using help modules and help on a particular module. You don't use any quotes. If I was to type help, and quotes JSON, it'll give me some help. It's going to assume I want help on the string functions. As you can see, there's starts with, ends with, L strip, write strip. No, what we need to type is in help JSON without the quotes, and that'll give us a list of what the functions and or members are for that particular module. So you can see that JSON is derived off uJSON, and there is a dump, dump S, load, and load S. Let's do the same with network. Import network. Now we can type help, network, and these are all the different functions and enumerators and members we've got. I often forget to use help when I'm coding away and I'll just jump on the internet and go look up some syntax or function names for the particular module I'm working with, but remembering to use help on the modules that you've got imported is a much faster way to find out what you're looking for. Okay, let's have a look at how to work with the JSON module. So as you can see above, I've got a config.json file, which is just a, a file sitting on my tiny Pico in the file system, and it's in JSON format. So to use JSON, I obviously have to import JSON, and what I want to do is load that file into my program so I can access that data. So in this case, I'm going to use with, which is called a context manager, and I'll go into what they are in a future episode. Then I'm going to type open, which is how you grab a file from the file system. I'm going to pass it the name, config.json, and I'm going to say as f. So what that's going to do is open up the file called config.json and store the file handle to the file inside f. Now what I can do is create another variable called config equals, and then I say json.load f. Now, what load will do is stream in the contents of f and convert that to a Python object inside config. So, enter. And now, if I type in config, we can see all the data is in there and it's in a dictionary format, which means I can also type config ssid and it gives me just that value. It's a dictionary of key value pairs. Of course, because it's a dictionary, I can change it config ssid equals hello and now if I up arrow and print it again it's now hello. So what if I wanted to re-encode this config object, the dictionary, back into a JSON string so I could store that again back in the file system? Well that's pretty easy as well. I can just say so output equals JSON. Now we want to use the dump command dump, but because we want to get output as a string and not as a stream that goes back to disk right now, 
we want to use dump s. And what dump s will do is grab the object and give us out a string instead of a string. So we then say config, and when we hit enter, if I now print the contents of output, you'll see that it looks the same as the dictionary above, except it's inside quotes. It's a string. So I can't now do output SSID because it's a string, not an object. And then we could just write that back to disk if we wanted to, or we could just use json.dump, which will let us stream it back to disk. Okay, working with Wi-Fi is pretty straightforward in MicroPython. Obviously, we need to import network. And now we have the option of creating either an access point interface or a station interface, whether we want to create an AP for other people to connect to us or whether we wanted to connect to an existing router to get out onto the internet to grab data or send data. So in this case, we're just going to create a station interface so we can get out onto the internet. So I'm going to say WLAN just as a variable name equals network dot WLAN and then we need to pass it what we want to do. So in this case it's going to be dot ST underscore IF. So this is just going to give us a station interface and then what we need to do is make that active. So WLAN dot active true. Now we're not actually connected to the router, we haven't passed it any form of SSID or password, but we have an open active interface. So now we can do interesting things like wlan.scan. That's going to scan the network and come back with a list of different Wi-Fi access points with a whole bunch of extra information. As you can see, my three sprockets, 3GBTC, which is my Wi-Fi network at home, is there. We can also query the LAN connection to see if it's actually connected to an access point. So we can say, is connected, in this case false, because we haven't actually told it to connect to anything. We can also query the connection and ask for the MAC address. Now what you're seeing it in actually is what's called a byte array. We can also say wlan.ifconfig, but in this case we're not actually connected yet, so we don't have an IP address, we don't have a subnet mask, there's no DNS available. Okay, so how do we connect? Well, you just say wlan dot connect, and you pass it the SSID as a string and the password as a string. Now, I'm not going to publicly type my data in here for everyone to see, but what I can do, like we did before, is say import JSON with open config Sion .json. I've got a different file sitting on my tiny pico that has my credentials in there. As f config equals json dot load f. Now I'm not going to print the contents of that. <laughs> That'd be a bit silly at this point. But what I can now do is say wlan dot connect. I can say config ssid comma config ssid password and now it's going to connect now it doesn't sit there as a blocking call now normally what you'd want to do is halt your code until the connection has finished and you can do that by simply saying while not wlan dot is connected and you can use pass which is just like a, a skip or a continue and of course in this case we should be connected already so it won't halt and now we can type in wlan.ifconfig and you can see I've got an IP address I've got a subnet mask and I've got my DNS set to my local router which is 192.168.1.1 for DNS1 and DNS2 so that's how you connect a station for Wi-Fi. So we can also now say wlan.active false. And we can disconnect our Wi-Fi. And if I go back and say I have config again, you'll see that we're back out. No IP address. So what about if we want to create an AP, an access point? Well, it's the same type of thing. wlan equals network dot 
wlan, and in this case we're going to say network dot ap interface instead. And we do the same wlan dot active and pass it true to turn it on. The problem we've got now is what is our access point called? We haven't set it. So what we want to do is turn that back off again. So we want to say wlan dot config. I'm going to set our ESSID equals and give it a name. So we'll call it ep 5 test. So that's what our access point is going to be called if we do a Wi-Fi scan. And now we can activate the access point. And if we do a Wi-Fi scan, we can see ESP5.test is on our list of available Wi-Fi points. Awesome. So we know how to load JSON data and we know how to initialize our Wi-Fi and connect to our router. Let's have a look at some code that does something practical and useful. So my Tiny Pico campaign on CrowdSupply launched recently and it's still running right now. And though this is not a plug for my campaign, the launch of the campaign actually made something interesting happen. A lot of people in my community have been tracking the number of Tiny Picos I've sold by looking at all the different pledges and multiplying out how many Tiny Picos there are per pledge pack. And people have been sending me running totals of how many Tiny Picos I've sold. And I was chatting with Brian Locke from Brian Locke YouTube channel, and he decided to put together a bit of a JavaScript scraper for the crowd supply page and set up a little website to run it to extract the data. And he's returning it in a JSON string. And I thought that would be a really interesting project to build a practical example of for this tutorial. So what I'll do first is run the code and show you what it does, and then we'll have a quick look through the code. Now, it looks like there's a fair bit of code, but most of what's in there are just comments. <laughs> so it won't take too long to go through the code. Okay, so let's do import, it's called grab stats. So import grab stats, it connects to my Wi-Fi, goes to the server, grabs the data in JSON format and prints it out in a human readable way. So as you can see, it breaks down the quantity of pledges, the number of tiny picos per pledge, and a total on the bottom, and it updates every 15 seconds, and Brian's actual server only scrapes every 30 seconds. So it caches the data so we're not constantly slamming the crowd supply website. So while that's running, let's have a look at the code. And maybe while it's running, we'll see something interesting happen if someone backs the campaign while it's going. The code's fairly straightforward. We're importing network, we're importing JSON, we're importing time, and we're using a module called uRequests, which is a socket-based library that lets you download data from the internet. We're opening the config file called configcon.json and I'm also checking to make sure that we've set the SSID. If it finds enter Wi-Fi SSID inside that file, it throws an error and the application stops. Next thing we do is create a WLAN reference for a station interface. We turn it on and we connect to the Wi-Fi by passing SSID and SSID password. We're then waiting till the WLAN is connected. And from here, this is where it all happens. So I've got a, an empty dictionary called previous TP totals, and I'll show you what that's for shortly. I've got a function that downloads the stats. So it creates an empty list, request equals your request get, and I'm passing it the URL from the config file. I then go and check the status code of the response I get back. And if the status code is 200, which means it was success, I'm then using what's called a list comprehension to generate a list of dictionary entries based on the data that's coming back. Now, this is probably the most complex thing in the code. We're going to look through this line starting from the end. We're going to read it backwards because it's going to make a lot more sense. So we're asking the response to be returned to us in JSON, and we're creating a loop using the for of their returned information and storing it in data. So we're iterating through the returned information and storing each inside data. And from the data, we want to build a list of dictionaries that has whatever structure we want. In this case, there are key value pairs, pledge and a value, quantity value, TP count and a value, and delta as a value. I'm populating TP count and delta with zero, and I'm populating pledge and quantity with the named values of claimed and name from the data variable. I get that it looks a bit crazy, but list comprehensions are just amazing inside MicroPython. In one line of code, I'm able to grab the data from the request, iterate through it, and format a completely custom list of dictionaries 
and store that inside pledges. Let's continue on. If the response code isn't 200, we just print an error with the response code. We close the request and then we return the list of pledges. Now I've also got another function here, which is just a helper function that allows me to print a whole bunch of formatted data. As you can see from the data below, everything's nicely tabbed in columns. And so I'm doing that by using a print statement with the format, which we've covered before. And inside the parentheses for each of the data elements that are going to be passed from format, I'm using some alignment and padding control to be able to tell things to be left justified, right justified, and how wide the items are going to be to make all our formatting nice. What I'm also doing is passing a CR, which will be a true or false, and my new line variable equals the results of that. Now this is an interesting line as well. This is something that looks quite different to what you'd normally expect inside C++. So new line equals my new line character if this is true, otherwise pass it nothing. And so then we're also passing new line over here. So if new line equals slash n, the very first thing will be a character term. Otherwise it'll just be an empty string. Okay, let's move on. So we've got some update interval timers and then we've got an endless loop and we're only going to update this, as I said, every 15 seconds. It calls download stats and passes the data back into pledges. Now, the very first time this runs through, it's gonna detect that my previous TP totals was empty. Okay, we're checking the length equals zero. We could also just say, if not prev TP totals, that'll do a similar thing because if it's empty, it'll be nothing, it'll be nil. But if it's empty, we're gonna go through all the data and pledges and I'm gonna populate a key for every one of those based on the pledge name and set it to zero. So that way I have a place to store the previous pledge when it goes through so I can see, did the next update come through have more than the previous? And if so, I can show what the delta is. I'm gonna do a print formatted and I do the headings. Let me just scroll this up a bit so you can see the heading. So I'm printing off all the different headings. I'm passing true because I want it to be a carriage return. I'm then printing the underscores with a false because I don't want an extra carriage return. I've got a count as zero for how many tiny pickers I've got per loop. Then I go through the list of pledges and I start calculating the data from that. Now we've covered for something in something before. So I'm grabbing the quantity from the data coming in. So that's this column here storing it in TP count, and then I'm saying if it's a two pack, because there are two tiny picos in a pack, I'm multiplying TP count by two. If it's a four pack, I'm multiplying it by four. And then I'm storing the previous value that was inside previous TP totals inside a variable. I'm then saying if the variable is greater than zero, that means we've stored something in there before, so it's not the first run. I want to make the delta B, whatever the current count is, minus the previous version. So if they're both the same, the delta will be zero. If the new version is too high than the previous, the delta will be two. Otherwise, I set the delta to zero. I then go and update that value back into previous totals, because I've already got my delta. I increase the total tiny pico count based on the current tiny pico count for that pledge. And then I create a variable like we did above that's got a plus and the delta if the delta has a value in it, if it's not zero. Else, don't put anything for the delta. And then I print that information down by passing all that information to my print formatted. And at the end, I just print the bottom underscores and the final TP count. That's it. It's not super complicated. As I mentioned, there's probably more comments in here than actual code. Some of the, the terminology or the, the syntax for the way I'm doing things might look a bit foreign if you're still fairly new to MicroPython. But as you can see, it's quite elegant. So that's it. That's a practical example of using JSON, Wi-Fi, manipulating data that's coming through, through list comprehensions, and displaying it in a format that it's easily readable. I hope you got something useful out of this episode. And until next time, I will catch you later. Bye.